What put me off social welfare? I've got to admit, I've worked with a lot of healthcare authorities over the years, and they've worked with social housing and other bodies. I see how money is wasted ridiculously and at the same time you'll get people that have been demanded they have to pay their council tax on time while other people have never paid it. There was a guy I remember he was up in court I can't remember who it was for this time but they know the guy is a drug, drug addict they know the guy is a complete waste of space and what they did is they turned around and said to him well you can pay it 10 pence a week that was his rent arrears rent arrears for a council flat um, 10 pence a week bear in mind he was I think at that time two years behind in his rent he can pay off it to 10 pence a week fantastic guess what will happen you'll just accumulate more debt and we'll see him in court in six months again um, they get a disproportionate amount of housing they get a disproportionate amount of government services these figures are not given out uh, to everybody. You know, at the end of the day, the figures are there, but it's, it's where do you find a lot of this stuff? Like I said before, the a senior officer at West Mercer Police said, you really want to see the crime figures or whatever from the real perspective, go to A&E on a Friday. Go to basically the accident emergency of a hospital. You'll see the shootings, the stabbings and everything else. The drug abuse, the alcoholism, and everything else that goes with it. A lot of the resources are funded by state. Alcoholic Anonymous, for example. I remember an ex's distant uncle. He had an apartment in this bed and breakfast that he didn't live at because he had his ex-wife that he would go and see on a regular basis and basically lived there till he fell out and then he'd move back here because he'd get more benefits if they live separately. He went to Alcoholics Anonymous because they gave free alcohol and your benefits were increased because you're an alcoholic. Was he an alcoholic? I don't think that was relevant. <laughs> it wasn't helping him, I'll tell you that now. All it was is he knew how to use the system and that's what he did. It was a full-time occupation. And he wasn't one, he was one of many. I've also seen it from people where they seem to have extra kids. Yet, at no point does the council seem to recognise that the woman has been living on her own for the last four years, yet managed to have a child nearly every year. Is she a close relative of Mary from the Bible? No, because the boyfriend comes over on the weekends and he's there whenever he feels like it. Um, but guess what? Taxpayers will fund that. Drug addicts destroying their own homes, another one. And then they're demanding things are fixed urgently and you're getting um, their care workers, whatever, up in your face demanding this poor, poor individual, he's had a hard life, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Violence out. No, the guy's always been disruptive because he's a disrupt disruptive heroin addict. His problems are not that we are not fixing his house, because guess what? He destroyed it. He burned his name in the ceiling with a cigarette lighter. He has litter all the way through of beer cans that are nearly a foot high throughout the home. His problems are not the local authority. The problems are himself and he's obviously not getting what he should get, uh, which is dealt with with his issues. Instead, they give him a house and say nothing's his fault. When I was in Brixton Prison doing a survey there, I found that there were support services all the way through. The ground floor of these wings, there were support services all the way through. Drug addiction, education, rehousing, like that rows and rows of them. How many victim support groups is there? I believe it's only one in the UK. The welfare state has encouraged these parasites to destroy society. 
It's allowed them to do it. It's assisted them doing it. There was a apartment that I was dealing with in Hereford where we're doing a clean out because um, we this was going back to another um, well the guy died and they were putting it back for somebody new moving in so I was there doing the uh, dealing with making sure it's fit for purpose and I found a postcard this postcard was the guy had gone to jail related to drug offences and he got a three month sentence and the postcard was joking about these idiots, which he was talking about his social worker and other people. Because while he was in uh, jail, they had given him a new cooker, a new fridge, painted his entire council flat. Um, what else did they do? Oh, there's a new washing machine there as well. New lighting, new curtains. Um, basically, they'd had a day trip at Argos and filled his entire house all brand new because this poor individual needed this care yet in this postcard you could see nothing but resentment because the postcard was for the guy upstairs and he was laughing because he was coming out in three days and he said you know they had done this for him they had done that and he was just mocking it to his neighbour who was also another junkie He come out, he was dead within 24 hours from a drug overdose. Was it worth investing all that stuff for him? Guess what? All that stuff has to be thrown out. Because the new tenant's not entitled to it, because it was for the junkie. That's where your tax money goes. Now you probably notice I don't get onto uh, refugees and stuff because the thing is, if somebody's got refugee status, it's very different different to somebody um, that is destructive on their own accord. Um, I have a real issue with people that do this stuff. I had a problem with a drug addict before. Um, he actually posted syringes through my letterbox when my daughter used to put her shoes on for school. Um, even him, he actually, this is, this is it's comical, um, he'd been lied, he'd lied to the agent related to the, the property. The agent had a reference from a prison warden, or his prison, from the prison authority, I can't remember if it was a warden or not. And the thing was, he wasn't there as a reference. He'd actually just brought this guy up, literally from the prison. And this is a reference for a house to say this guy's a nice guy. The guy had nearly a hundred convictions before he moved to my area. Because they'd moved him from some scum hole in Birmingham, um, where there, there's a lot of crime, a lot of drugs, etc., to give him a fresh start. He immediately started a crime wave. Um, now, you started to notice stuff disappearing, and the clinch thing for me was when he stole my tools from my car. Because at that time, I was a carpenter and joiner, and he stole all my tools, so I couldn't work because I needed to replace my tools before I could work because I was a contractor. So I'm at home because I am now toolless, and he's put me out of work basically. Well, I need to get replenish my tools and I started notice strange occurrences because normally I'm at work so I don't see this stuff this old um, Sierra pickup pulled up it's got a brand new ride on lawnmower on the back and West Mercy please you can report the crimes online so I said oh, this, this looks a bit odd the guy downstairs doesn't have a job and then that went through then I found out there's a spate of burglaries in the area. Then I was talking to neighbours, and you start to see that he's been borrowing tools and things, torches and stuff, because the guy's been out burgling. And then I come across an article which actually said he, I think it was 86 convictions. So he was just under the 100 at the time, but bear in mind, he's over 100 now. Um, so I started informing the neighborhood to be aware of this guy. And at the same time, he was 
we had a, a no come through the door from my second hand electrical shop at the end of the street they said I've come around to have a look at the fridge, the cooker and all this sort of stuff so I contacted his landlord and said uh, who owns the, the cooker and stuff downstairs he says oh, I do, why? Um, he's selling them all is that what you mean? he's selling them all I've just had a note through the door from the electrical shop. So the landlord got in touch with the police, police went there, no, no crime had actually happened, the second hand shop obviously. Being a thief, you get less in trouble than receiving the goods. The shop would get more trouble than this junkie. Um, so what happened is, the shop didn't want to know. They say, oh I wasn't aware of this, blah, blah, blah. Well, a bit of distance, fine. Guy was in, got jailed on the Friday, went through the um, initial police interviews etc and was back out Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon I was at the neighbours next door and I could hear all this rumbling which is like stuff being moved around and I rang my ex I said what's going on because my mother was next door with my, my ex at the time. We weren't exes by the way at the time um, but she said oh the guy the guy downstairs is um, he's taking the washing machine and stuff out from downstairs. So I just rang the landlord and says he's now emptying the property. Now this guy ain't gonna change, is he? He was jailed, uh, arrested for it on Friday, and he's come out Saturday afternoon and still doing it. He's come up with a van and loading it all up to steal it all from his own apartment. He's let renting. He also told the landlord the day earlier, "You will never get me out of the, this effing apartment." I am not effing leaving, blah blah blah. So the landlord is now dealing with this thing, got in touch with the agent, the agent's got in touch with the person that gave him the uh, um, entitlement to move into a nice area, and they said, well we thought you wouldn't realise that he'd just come out of jail because I worked for the prison service. They actually lied. Now. From there, the, the, the guy was arrested again, and he got a four-month jail sentence. And the social worker and the prison service got back in touch with the landlord and says, can we pay his rent till he comes out? And obviously the landlord, basically, you can, no. <laughs> and the funny thing is, he even rang the landlord up about his unemployment benefit because his little drug druggy friends that he went with had been cashing in his gyros every week while he was in jail as well which I thought of found completely funny in the sense of a why is the guy getting unemployment benefit while he's in jail but secondly that how ironic the guy didn't like people stealing from him yet he was doing it on a daily basis the guy would never change. He'd been committing crimes since he was 12 years old. He actually blamed everybody else but himself. There's no way you can change that person. Unless you stuck him on an island in the middle of nowhere. And give him time to think about everything he's done. Um, and that's the problem in the welfare state. These, they're getting regular methadone and all this sort of stuff. It does not fix the problem. It's not fixing it at all. It's a drain on financial services. It's a drain on the medical system and taxpayers. It does not fix the problem. And that's the big issue with a lot of this welfare stuff. No blame culture. No responsibility. It's just, let's try and see if it works. If it doesn't work, don't blame me because we don't blame anybody. But next year we need more money because we're going to do something else. And it goes all the way through. I blame the involvement of the NHS and the clinic in Worcester in the death of my mother is another reason. They gave her medication that they knew had side effects and stuff and didn't inform her. And when she was coming back to their clinic, and also the A&E with those side effects, they, they just sent her home until eventually she, she was in a coma and her body was shutting down and she was on a um, 
what do you call it, ventilators, and it was about 12 different types of machines keeping her alive and cleansing her blood and everything else for two weeks. And when she did return, a lot of her mind was not the same. They basically killed her. Along with that, when they got in discussion with the clinic, the response was, well, we don't have time to tell people the, you know, the side effects. We don't have enough time to monitor this stuff, blah, blah, blah. You know what? It's your duty. In the same way, when my mother was getting in a bad way up until she died, they'd actually put off her meetings with the mid, what's they call it? The, uh, the like a local nurse, um, because her health was deteriorating. Did nothing. Dropped dead. Um, so no, I'm not a fan of any welfare state at all. If anything, it's farcical. It likes to put itself on a pillar of doing something amazing, yet in reality it's lying through its teeth constantly. It doesn't deal with its issues. It doesn't recognize its responsibility. When hospitals kill people, you can get this line out the newspapers Lessons will be learned. Remember that one, because you will see it in UK tabloids. Lessons will be learned. It's as if they've got a sheet just ready for when they've had a breakout of MSRA or something else. Lessons will be learned. No, they won't. Just buying stupid binary clocks and wasting money on art in hospitals. That lesson hasn't been learned. Millions get wasted on that garbage. At the same time, I'm a fan of art but I'd much rather have a system that functions. Recognition that there is failings in the system is something where a lesson should be learned, but it doesn't. Thanks for watching.